$20,000 machine and I can't get a real-time playback. If you've ever used After Effects, Maya, or Cinema 4D, then you are no stranger to a leggy experience. PC, Mac, $500 computer, $20,000 workstation, it doesn't matter. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your system run 75% faster in Resolve with simple techniques. And if you wanna follow along, you can download the footage from my Discord channel. Link is gonna be in the description. All I ask in return is you subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, and let's roll the intro. Before we jump in, question of the week. Who graded Oppenheimer and how would you describe the look? The winner will get a shout out in the next video. Resolve has three major ways to optimize your footage. Timeline proxy resolution, generate proxy media, and render cache. So let's start with the most common type, which is timeline proxy resolution. You guys are probably familiar with it in Premiere Pro, Final Cut 10, or Avid. They all have that where you can drop the timeline resolution to half or quarter. So then the playback is smooth. It's perfect for editing. It is not ideal for color grading and you will know what I mean. So right now we're in our color page and if I do a playback, I'm getting about six or seven frames, correct? Okay. If I go under playback menu and timeline proxy resolution, I can take it from full to half and this footage is 4K. You can see it right here, UHD. And the timeline is also UHD, okay? So let's go back here. I can go in my playback timeline proxy resolution. Let's drop it to 1080p, which will be half. We were getting seven frames per second. Let's see where we're at now. We're getting about 14 to 15 frames. It's a 100% increase. So the performance boost is out of control. Okay, what happens if I go to playback and I go under timeline proxy resolution, drop it to quarter? Let's try it again. Okay, so now we're getting near real time. So we're getting 20 frames. We went from seven frames, six to seven frames to 20 frames per second, which is more than doable if you are editing, okay? But here's the problem. If I punch in and we are here, just look at the jaggedy edges and what happened to the grain pattern. Now keep your eyes in this section right here. Let me go back to playback, timeline proxy, set it to full and just look at what happens. You see like how much the halation, the texture of our footage was affected. That's why it is absolutely a big fat no when it comes to grading to use this technique. This is perfect for editing. We recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing, and working with 8 bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus, we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of my personal LUTs. Link to the training is in the description below. Let's get back to the video. All right, so now let's look at the second popular option, which is generate proxy media. It's perfect for this situation right here. So I got a clip here that is shot in raw on red, Gemini, 5K clip. And if I do a playback, after a little bit of grading, it's choking. And we're getting about 14 frames, okay? You can see it right here, Gemini 5K. So what can we do? What we can do is we can generate proxy to get a much smoother playback. So when I click on my project settings under master settings, this is the section that we need to look at. So for resolution, right now it's set to choose automatically. We can go and force it if we just wanna make sure that the resolution stay intact because we already discussed that, that when you drop the resolution, it does affect your texture. If you're applying halation, grain, things like that. But Resolve is so smart that depending on your system, it is going to make that decision. In my case, I'm pretty confident that it's not going to fudge with my resolution. So I'm gonna just leave it to choose automatically and then for proxy media format, 422HQ is near lossless. This is the de facto for broadcast and Netflix and all those platforms. So that is the standard by default, and I'm gonna leave it as is. Now generating proxies take time. So you wanna make sure that you choose the fastest drive that you have to dump that stuff on. So right now the drive that I picked has about 8,000 megabytes like read and write. So it's gonna make the entire process a lot faster. Same thing will go with cache files. 
All right, so then what we want to do is we want to come over here in our media pool, and this is our R3D file. So I'm going to just right click here and I'm going to say generate proxy media. Okay, so as soon as I click right here, it's going to go ahead and transcode the clip to 422HQ. On the surface, nothing really happened, right? Like the file still says R3D. Let's play it back and let's see what happens. Wow. So we're getting real time playback. Something actually changed, but the quality is exactly the same. And it still says R3D, even if I hover over and if I go here, it says R3D right here. The only thing that changed is the icon right here. Just look at that. So instead of like what we had before, now we have a camera behind and then a little clip in front of it, which means like it, it's not camera original, it's a proxy clip. Another way to know that this is a proxy clip, you can right click in this area and you can go down here, turn on proxy media path, and then also online status. And if I come out, all of a sudden we can see the proxy resolution, it left it as is, just as I expected. And then for the online status, it's not original, it's proxy now. And if I go all the way over here, it's going to give me my location where the proxy media is stored. And this is what's going on right now. Here, if I go to my color page, one thing that you have to make sure is that in your playback under proxy handling, it's set to prefer proxies because if it's set to disable all proxies, now if we do a playback, nothing is happening. So you might actually be confused. You're generating proxies back there and then you come here and you're like, dude, why is it not working? What's going on? So just go here in your playback, make sure in proxy handling, it's set to proxies. Now, the ideal case scenario for using proxies is this. When you're grading, click on playback and go under proxy handling and just set that to prefer camera original. So when you're grading, you have the highest, highest quality image. So even if it's choppy, who cares? You're grading, keep going. When the client comes in, you can go, all right, let me just do this. And you can just go prefer proxies. Since the quality is not super low res, the client is gonna be super happy and appreciate that the playback is in real time. And then once you're done with the client, go back to camera original. The way you wanna organize yourself is that you're going to lunch, generate proxies, and then when you come back, everything is ready to go. At that point, you can just flip the switch and that's about it. Moving on to third and my favorite option, render cache. And this is the method where Resolve will go in and render your clips when your system is in idle status. Resolve has three different types of render cache options. And before we jump into that, let's click on our settings again. And what you can see here in your render cache is set to ProRes 422HQ, which is exactly what we need. All right, so let's start with Fusion render cache. You see these three little stars right here? That means it's a fusion clip. So I just took off all the corrections that I made to this clip. And if I play it, it doesn't play in real time. It's choking. Why is that? It's ProRes 444 UHD. It should play back just fine. That's happening because there is a fusion effect applied to it and it's choking it. In order to take care of that, I can right click here. I can go under render cache fusion output. I can set it to on. Nothing really changes here because you have to go under playback, render cache, and then set it to user. As soon as I do that, you see that line? Now you're gonna see like it starts to turn blue. All right, so check it out. Now we're getting real-time playback. So we went from six, seven frames to real-time playback. So that is the first problem that is handled. Why did I do this first? Everything in Resolve works from upstream to downstream. When you make a change here, then you go to your color page, and if I take all of these and turn them on, that blue line stays intact. It doesn't need to be re-rendered. And if I do a playback, it's still kind of choking. So way better than before, but there are certain effects applied here that are pretty heavy, and that's what's causing the choke. A couple of options that we have here to take care of this problem is playback, go under render cache, and what if we set it to smart? That is an automatic option. And if we go to smart, now Resolve is going and looking at every single node that it thinks needs render cache. This is my least favorite type of render cache because you're not in control. It's just taking over and it's overdoing everything. What if I go and take you to this project right here and now we have a red raw project with hundreds of clips in a timeline 
And imagine if I go here in playback and change this to smart, just look at what's gonna happen. First of all, this red line appeared on my entire timeline and like, look at what's about to happen to my clips. Boom, all of a sudden they all turn red. And I don't know if you can hear my computer right now, it's working so freaking hard. And just look at how many different nodes it's gonna go and pick out that need to be rendered. It's gonna take so much storage on your system. It's gonna choke your machine for so long. That's why this is not my preferred method. And a more advanced method would be this. So let's uh, buy some real estate. All I'm gonna do is playback, go here, and then change that to user. Let's do a playback. Whoa, like it didn't do anything. So the changes that we had made with our fusion render that got us from six frames to 14 frames, that was a big jump. But here, nothing really changed. It's because now you're in manual mode. You have to tell Resolve which node you wanna render cache. It's really easy to do this. But let's just say I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna turn off these three effects and I'm gonna do a playback. So we went from 14 frames to almost like near real time. So that is pretty ridiculous. What if I take this off and now play it back? Well, that's even better. Now we're literally almost 24 frames a second. Okay, what if I turn this off and play it back? Now we're getting a real-time playback. What if we reverse it? What if I turn all of these on and now do a playback? We're near real time. Then it gets to tell me that the real culprit was noise reduction as it always will be. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna turn this on, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say node cache on. And just look what happens. This is the only node that turned red because we're manually controlling it. It's gonna render it so much faster. And now if I go do a playback, like once it's done rendering the cache, like you're gonna see, we're gonna get a crazy bump. 12 frames, wait for it, boom. So now we're at 21 frames. This is more than doable, whether you're showing it to client or when you're working on your own, grading your projects. The beautiful thing about this is that if you're working with a fixed node tree, even if you have 400 shots, we can make that one change and then do select ripple. And that's gonna be applied on the entire project. The node order matters when you're using node caching. So if I were to detach this by hitting E, bring this all the way to here and release it, it's gonna take a second and everything turn red. So it's gonna go and re-render. So let's just wait for that, okay? And now if I play it back, we're getting the same amount of performance. The problem is now if I go and create a new node, look what it did. It threw the entire render off. You can't just mindlessly put anything anywhere. So if I were to detach this again and put it upstream like we did before. So now I'm going to set that here. Wait for it until everything is rendered. Okay, so we're, we're there again, right? Now, if I go here downstream and I go, I wanna change this up and just make it like crazy. So I wanna go do that. Look at this, I'm turning it on and off. It's not affecting anything. It doesn't need to re-render because that node cache happened upstream. And this is how you make Resolve run 75% faster on your machine. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button. I'll see you guys in the next one.